Hello everyone, and we are in the second episode of the PvP series. In the last episode, we have built a team. As you can see, I have Himber as my first Lumion, then Luminami, then Ikazune, then Charonix, Paraclaw, Tartiki, and Samarine. So in the first episode, we built this team. But in this episode, we're going to teach you on how to PvP other people. So with that out of the way, let's head right into the battles. Alright, we're into the first battle, and I'm actually going to pause at this point. Because there is so much I want to talk about. So, I've already done the battles. This is without any sound or audio. Because I want to talk to you on how to battle in the Lumion Legacy Battle Coliseum. So, as you can see, this team is very scary. And there's a lot of things you want to watch out for when you play Lumion Legacy. You need to predict on which Lumion that that team's going to lead with. And judging by this matchup, there are two potential leads that this player can go for. He can go for Pivot Lead with Deludrix with Zip Zap. He can also go for Metatoad Lead. Metatoad Lead is possible. But I feel like the lead is going to be a Gargolem Speed Lead to play Spar. So, first thing you want to do is look at the potential leads. But the next thing I would do next is which Lumians are the problem some Lumians. And these are the Lumians that kind of destroy you in every single battle. Like, these are the Lumians that can devastate your team if you're not careful. And judging by this battle, Pyrolin is definitely up there. Even with the Illuminami, Pyrolin can definitely do some work. And Charonix. So the two problem some Lumians on this guy's team is the Charonix and the Pyrolin. The Ludrix could also do some work as well, but I don't see it as much. And the other Lumians are just going to be there. So it's finding what Lumians that you need to bring for each match matchup. So I'm playing the clip now. I'm actually going to speed this up a little bit. There you go. I'm speeding it up. And for the Charonix, I bring Luminami. So I bring Luminami for the Charonix and also for the Pyrolin as well. And that's when I decided, yes, I'll go for Himber, Himber Lee because I'm predicting the Gargolem Speed Lead. So that's what I was going for. I was going for the Himber Lead to counter the Gargolem Speed. And I bring Chartiki for the Charonix because that means so it can't light speed rate a victory. And the problem some Lumians on his side. There's quite a few Lumians that can destroy this guy's team. Luminami looks amazing against it because there is nothing immune to light besides the Charonix. And even then, that Charonix is probably Reaper. Tyronix also looks amazing for this team as well. Besides the Metatoad, Tyronix can do some work against every Lumion on this person's team. And completely walls the wrestling. So it's basically a free swap in every time. And those would be the Lumions that I brought. I also brought Terra Claw so I could soak the Deludrix hits and the Metatoad hits easily. I actually don't bring one of the core Lumions of the team. I don't bring a Kazune. And the reason why I don't bring a Kazune is because it doesn't look too good in this battle. Especially when barbs are up and... Pyro, it doesn't hit through Pyroland. The Deludrix could be boots. I don't hit Metatoad hard. So I actually leave a Kazune behind. Also, priority with Flight Speed Ray. So I actually leave a Kazune behind in this battle. So I'm going to speed this up a little bit. And that will be the team I bring. And there we go. He leads off with the Gargolem Speed Lead to place Barbs. Which is either going to be this or the Deludrix lead. So I made the right predict. I'm predicting the lead. And the play is obvious here. I Ice Hammer. No, even if he swaps out, the play is the Ice Hammer. Because yes, as expected, this person goes for the Barbs. And the Gargolem Speed will have a Clutch Plushie. So there it is. There's the Clutch Plushie. And now, this is where the game starts. So, there's a layer of Barbs now. What move do I do in this case? There are three potential plays that this person can do. And I can name all three of them. The Gargolem Speed will either stay in and place another layer of barbs. He will swap out, save his Gargolem for later, and swap into Pyrolin to predict the Icicle Traps or Ice Hammer again. Or he goes into Upsidurgon to soak all Himber's hits. So he will either stay in, go into Pyrolin, or go into Upsidurgon. And the plays that I could do is either Earthquake to predict the Pyrolin. Very risky, considering it doesn't actually hit the Gargolem speed. Quick Punch to just get rid of the Gargolem speed. Or Icicle Trap, so if it swaps out, he can't swap back in, even with the Pyrolin on his team. And I was predicting Pyrolin lead. 
So I was predicting the Pyrolin lead at this point of the game. So I'll show you what happens. I was predicting for the Pyrolin play here, but it's not the Pyrolin. Instead, it's the Obsidragon. And I know it seems odd that I predict for the Pyrolin play here, but even if Pyrolin comes in, the traps go after. So, and if I went for the Earthquake, I would have just, that would have been a bad play if he placed another layer of barbs. So Icicle Traps was the safest play in this moment. And there we go. The Obsidragon's in. This one's an obvious swap. I was thinking Chironix, but I decided to go into Luminami because Luminami can get all its health back. And, yep, yeah, that's why I went into the Luminami, especially with the barbs up. I don't want Chironix to get hurt. So I go for the Flash and Fleet play here, but he swaps out of Obsidragon. But he goes into Pyrolin, and I know what everyone's thinking. That is a low-level play right there. He went into the one thing that can't hit the Luminami. But this is actually an addictive of high level play right here the reason why this is a high level play is because he gets rid of the traps he knew my luminami was going to go for the flash and flay it does that much to the pyrolin and by the way i go into phantom here i was i kind of wasn't sure what to do here so i went into phantom and i'll tell you about that i'll tell you about the later plays later but the reason why this is a high level play is because he's trying to get rid of those icicle traps he did this to get icicle traps up and to try to bring his Gargolem speed back into the match. So, so there's one or two things that the Pyrolin will do. He'll either set up predicting the Illuminami coming back in, or he's going to, or he's going to swap out to beat the Tyronix. So, it's a couple plays that he'll do there. This is basically a free magnify. There's no reason why not to magnify here. So yeah, the magnify comes in. Pyrolin can't hit me. And yeah, he goes for the peace of mind. Again, that's not a bad play. And the reason why that isn't a bad play is because he was predicting the Luminami. But this next play is going to be the biggest change playmaker of the game. It's plus one. This is a plus one Nova Blast with Light Essence. I attack the Pyrolin here. Hopefully I can deal half to it. Which, from this range, it would usually do half. And that's where a little stroke of luck happens. The critical hit. That would not have one shot at the Pyrolin, but this was a bad play on the opponent. The opponent should have never stayed in to Charonix. The most it could have done was Fire Breath, and that would have done like 30 to 40 damage. So she should have never stayed in after plus two from Charonix. So that was a bad play, and that bad play would cost this person this battle. As I get all my health back... And she basically sacks the Gargolem Speed next. So, yep, the Gargolem Speed goes down. The next person she goes into is the Charonix. And, again, this is where the battle gets interesting again. Because while Light Speed, while Nova Blast is the obvious play, there is that potential chance that the Charonix is Prismatic. Which would basically give it a free attack. So, I decided to go for the Frost Beam. It is a guaranteed hit. It won't one-shot the Charonix on Light Nova Blast. But this is the, when you have a plus two Chironix, and when their Chironix is at plus zero, you have to go with the safe option here. Because if you go for a risky play here, all of a sudden, you're going to get reverse swept by a Chironix. So I can't allow that. So Frost Beam does a ton. Nova Blast would have one-shot it. And the opponent does the same thing. Again, going for the safe play. But I'm at plus two. My opponent's not at plus two. And let's just speed up the rest of the battle because, yeah. Because we get the sweep from here. As you can see, bang, Tyronix. Only two Lumians left on this person's team. And I'm going to actually pause here. Because while this does seem like an obvious situation to actually get the Nova Blast off, I rest. And the reason why I rest is because the Obsidragon does nothing to me. There's no reason to waste all my energy and then have a potential late game sweep at the end. Even though that the chances of that happening are low, there's no reason to make that play. When I could just get my energy back, get rid of the Obsidragon, get my health back, and then win the battle. This first battle was kind of simple after I got my Tyronix in. But the next battle is going to be a lot more complex. This player was an intermediate player, in my opinion. By the way this person was playing, his level was intermediate. Not amazing, not pro level, but not a noob level, neither. This is an intermediate level player. But Tyronix was able to get the sweep in this battle... Because of the crit mainly, but also the Magnify really came in clutch there. And also the Himber play at the start really helped out get rid of that Gargolem speed. So yeah, with that out of the way, 
let's head into the second battle. All right, battle number two. And this battle is way longer than the first one. So let's pause this. And as you can see, look at that team. That team looks eerily familiar to my team, actually. Himbu, Luminami, Ikazune. Yes! Himbu, Luminami, Ikazune team. Very scary core to deal with because of extra pivot. But there's also Tyronix, which, again, I have Tyronix. Extra pivot with Deludrix. I don't know why he has a Deludrix, Luminami, and a Snaggu. But I think the reason is because Himbu. And a Sumo Beetle in there as well. So... Looking at this person's team, the biggest threat is Luminami, and the Luminami is definitely one of the biggest threats. Himber is also very scary as well, but I do have a Kazune. Tyronix. Tyronix is by far the biggest threat. I have to get rid of that Tyronix. If Tyronix comes in, we're in trouble. Snagoop also looks very bad as well. Super effective. Super effective. Super effective. Can do a lot of damage to you. A lot of damage to you. Super effective. The only thing that can properly swap into a Snagoop is the Himber, and that's it. So, Snagoop and the Chironix are the two biggest threats. So, my brings are going to... So, these will be the Lumians that I bring. I will bring the Himber. I think I bring the Himber for the potential Icicle Traps for the Snagoop. No, I think... And I also bring it for his Himber as well, because my Himber can 1v1 other Himber, so I do that. I bring Luminami because there are no plant types, so Pivot is free. I bring in Chartiki to stop his pivot. And I bring in Kazune because fast pivot looks amazing here. And then the last Lumion is very interesting. I don't know who I should bring as the last Lumion. Tyronix looks amazing here. But that Deludrix is very, very threatening. That Deludrix is very threatening. So I decide to bring something that could soak hit. So I bring Claw. I was thinking about bringing Sam Marine because, you know, potential late game clean with Clutch Plushy, but I decided not to do that. I'd bring Terra Claw instead just so I could soak range hits. Plus, not only that the Terra Claw soaks hits from the Deludrix, it could soak hits from the it could soak hits from the Luminami and from the Ikazune. So this is a good play bringing Terra Claw, and you will see why it's a great play later. And my lead will be Ikazune to get pivot. So that would be what I would do. And we both had the same idea. Ikazune leads. We both had the same idea. And the play is obvious here. Like, as much as I could swap out, this is scary. This could also be a Magnified Kazune, which is something I do got to keep in mind. But the smart play is, is to just flash and flay, and whoever the Kazune outspeeds who, which mine does because I'm nimble. This one's probably a smarter Kazune. And yeah, I get damage on the Kazune, and then I go into Terra Claw. Not great because his Kazune goes second. So, there's the Zip Zap. It actually goes for the Zip Zap. So, I could have went into Himber there. And that was, if that was a Boots Kazune, that would have been great. But that's too risky when he could also predict the potential Fire Breath. So, his Kazune goes into Deludrix. This was a low-level play here. And I know what you're thinking. Jetstream hits Terra Claw. Terra Claw is a range tank. It will soak anything Deludrix throws at it. And this Deludrix will go down to one health by the Bangle Bash. And after that play, shows that it's a Clutch Plushy Deludrix. Meaning that that was its Clutch Plushy. So it can have no other Clutch Plushies on the team. And now, this is where the game gets interesting. In this position, will the Deludrix stay in? Will it swap out? Now, I'm not sure what it could do. I don't think it was going to go into Luminami because Bangle Bash is a threat. Snagoop is definitely a threat as well. But I decided to predict the Himber. So I went for the rough up to predict for the Himber. Because if Himber comes in and plays Icicle Traps, we could be in trouble. But he could have also went into Snagoop and got a free swap it. So it was either Snagoop or Himber. I predicted the Himber with rough up. And he swaps out of his Deludrix. And look what we have here. Himber comes on in. And Himber comes on in. And it takes a solid chunk. So that is big. That... That damage on Himber is gone for the rest of the fight. But my opponent does do a good play here. I'll go into Luminami just to soak any hit that Himber throws my way. But the Himber knows that Luminami soaks its hits and plays Icicle Traps, which is huge. Even though I have two Fire types, those Icicle Traps makes it so my Terra Claw can't swap in. I go for Flash and Flea and not a Maroon. And that's so I can pivot into either Chartiki or Kazune to get rid of one layer of traps. So those Icicle Traps does put pressure on me. Even though I have two Fire Types, those Icicle Traps puts pressure onto the team. And the Hipper knows that, so he stays in. I don't know why he went for the Ice Hammer there, though. 
Should have just went for the Earthquake. But I do go for the Flashing Fleet here. And I decided... I actually got a lucky crit here, which is nice. And it's either Chartiki, the defensive option, or Ikazune, the offensive option. I went for the offensive option because I don't think the Himber's going to stay in. I heavily doubt the Himber stays in. And I'm going to pivot again because I feel like the Himber's going to swap out. I feel like the Himber is going to freaking swap out. Unfortunately, I make a wrong, I make a wrong move here. Of course, the Himber stays in on an Ikazune for some strange reason. And yeah, the Himber survives and gets a free hit on my Luminami. So, bad play on my part. I was trying to predict the Himber swapping out, and it stayed in on an Ikazune even though it has Fire Breath. So, that didn't work out. But it doesn't matter. I go for a Flash and Flee here, but not before his Himber gets a very, very lucky crit that completely lowers my Luminami's health. Really unfortunate circumstance here, but... His Himber's dead, and my Illuminati can be saved for later. And I went into Himber. And the one reason why I went into Himber here is so Deludrix doesn't come back in for free. And so I can quick punch the Deludrix. So that's why I went to him Himber here. So Himber comes on in to stop that Deludrix. So now my opponent doesn't go into Deludrix and instead goes into Ikazune, which is basically a free, a free Ikazune swap in. And now the traps are gone. And Himber is dead. So the Icicle Traps are gone for the rest of the battle. Which, that's huge for my part. And his Ikazune goes for Fire Breath, which I absorb. So that worked out very well on my part. I just go for another Pivot move. I go for the Flash and Flay. I've outsped his Ikazune already. So I know that my Ikazune outspeeds his. It could have also been a speed tie now looking at this. But I don't think any Ikazune's with Boots runs nimble. And he goes into Luminami knowing that I go for the Flash and Flay. Good predict on his part. I go... I don't know what I do here, actually. Yeah, I go into Chartiki. Chartiki is a smart play. I think there was one play where I did go on a, go into a Himber with a Luminami, but I don't think I did it there. I just go for the Muck Blast because I know a lot of his Lumians. He has a Luminami, he has a Deludrix, and he has an Ikazune. So I'm just like, yes, we can hit any of those three. I still don't know what the last one is yet, so let's see what the last Lumion is. And the last Lumion is the Snag Goop, which that is bad news. The Snag Goop is really bad news. Weak to Toxic, weak to Toxic, weak to Air. And also, Ikazune gets two-shotted. So, very rough scenario there. Very tough. The only swap in I have is the Himber, and the Himber can't swap in more than three or four times. So I go into Himber here. That's kind of the only play I can do. And I actually waste its Noxus Shell, which is nice. So that's good. I make it wasted on the Himber. That's nothing. And I'm just like, now this is another play where it gets interesting because there are two possible outcomes here. I want him to go into the Ikazune. Go into Ikazune or Luminami. So yeah. Earthquake is honestly a play here, but Ice Hammer hits the Snag Goop and gets rid of it. That's if the Snag Goop stays in. But an Icicle Trap makes it so the Snag Goop shouldn't stay in. So this was a very tough play here. I wasn't sure what to do here, but I decided to go with the Icicle Traps and the Snag Goop swaps out into Luminami. So I should have probably went for the Earthquake there, but the Icicle Traps are now in. Putting pressure onto its Ikazune, so that's good. So now the battle is heavily leaned onto Ikazune. Luminami is on the field. And I have quite a few options here. I can go into my own Luminami, but I decided to go into Chartiki here. And his Luminami caught on. So he goes for the Maroon here and takes my Chartiki down a decent amount of health. So that so he got me there. Didn't go for the Flash and Flay. And I have quite a few plays here. Either the Ikazune comes in or the Snagoop comes in. Muck Blast because I want him to go into Zikazune. I want to chip that Ikazune a little bit more. So I go for the Muck Blast here. It's probably the best play anyway in case the Illuminami stays in. But Illuminami's pretty much never going to stay in on the char. And he actually goes into Deludrix and sacks it. This I did not agree with. I don't agree with that decision. And I'll let me just sack the Muck Blast. So... This is actually a very bad decision on my opponent's part. I can see why he did it. It's just for Chartiki to waste a move to bring his Ikazune in. But if he can get rid of those, but if he want, but he if he could get rid of those icicle traps with the Kazune, that Deludrix comes back onto the field and can do some major work. And even though I have the Himber, 
he has the Lumians to play around it. So, but then again, if they get Kazune's low. So, I guess it's a bit of both sides. He kind of needed to sack the Deludrix to keep his Ikazune at high health. Which, that is what he does here. He goes into Snag Goop to threaten out the Chartiki. When he probably wouldn't have done that before. To be fair, I don't know why he went into Snag Goop here. He should have went into Ikazune, but whatever. Whatever floats your boat. And he goes for the double into Ikazune. So he basically makes a double predict here. And that's what a lot of people do. Making the right predict makes the difference between a win or a loss in the game. Some people just do a full out swap. Which full swaps are very risky. Because you're not attacking the opposing Lumion when you're making a full swap. If the other person is attacking, the Lumion you swap into gets injured. Even if it's a little bit, that damage adds up. But if you're predicting them to swap into another Lumion, it works. And the gamble here from Ikazune works because now it's in an amazing matchup against my Hamburg. So that's a great matchup for him. But it doesn't matter. I still have a Luminami and an Ikazune. I can go into either one of the two. I go into the Ikazune. He goes into he goes for the Flash and Flea. He learns from earlier in the fight. Great play on his part. Gets a little bit of chip on my Ikka. And I think he's going to go into Luminami here. And he's in trouble. My Kazune has all the firepower now. There are quite a few decisions you can do here. And I go for the Zip Zap. There's no reason why not to Zip Zap. Even with that Ikazune potentially being, even if the Ikazune is secret ability and gets a plus one, I have a ranged tank, so I'll, I should be okay. I go for the Zip Zap. The Luminami knows that. Soaks the hit. And there's no reason to save Luminami because Luminami is weak to the Ikazune and weak to the Snagu. So I was just like, yeah, that's the only way I can get Luminami back into the battle. And that's why I made the swap into Luminami and not the Chartiki. And yeah, I didn't want my Chartiki to get hurt because it's the only thing that can properly deal with the Luminami. And this next play is going to be the biggest play of the game here. What do I do? Does the Luminami stay in? Or does the Luminami swap out? Because my Luminami is a very sluggish Luminami. I'm, I'm a robust... I think I'm a robust, smart Luminami with very sluggish. So I'm a very sluggish Luminami with no UPs. Meaning, I and a lot of Luminamis do run like very robust and very clever. So I should underspeed this Luminami. There's almost never a Luminami that runs very sluggish. Because they don't want the two positive traits. They want the double positives on either its melee defense or range defense, depending on the situation. So, I'm assuming that my Luminami outspeeds hit, underspeeds hits. And if his Luminami goes for Flash and Flay, he has two swap-ins. A Kazune and Snagu. If the Luminami stays in on my Luminami, it's pretty much a chip fest. We don't really hurt each other too much. So, And that doesn't matter, because I don't really need Luminami anymore in this battle anyway. So... It was down. Who will come in? Ikazune or Snagu? Maroon takes out the Ikazune. And Frostbeam takes out the Snagu. And I decided to go for the Maroon to predict the Ikazune. And the reason why I predicted the Ikazune is because of the Icicle Traps. The Icicle Traps are still up. The Snagu would still steal a decent amount of chunk. And the Ikazune can get rid of the Icicle Traps. So I was just like... Let's maroon and predict the icicle and predict the Kazune because he wants to get rid of the icicle trap. So that's what I decided to do here. I, I see there's me hesitating. I'd go for the maroon here. And as predicted, he goes for the flash and flee. And the Lumion he goes into is a Kazune. Maroon was also the safest play anyway. Even if he went into Snagoop, it would have worked anyway because it would have checked Snagoop to almost no health, which would have been into range for Himber. I would have just sacked the Luminami after that. Go into Himber and put the pressure back onto his team. So that worked perfectly. Getting rid of that, that Maroon play opened up the rest of the battle for me. And now I'm pretty much in line for the victory after getting rid of his Ikazune. He is going to try his hardest with his Snagoop to do something. I save Lubinami for later because I'm just like, I have a Himber still. Why not? And yeah, I go into Himber here. And I actually place Icicle Traps again, predicting the Luminami coming in, but he stays in. He's just like, okay, yeah, there's no way to win this anymore. So he's just like, yeah. Which was a good play on his part, but, uh, you know, his Snagoop doesn't do too much to me. And yeah, the Snagoop is dead. The biggest, the biggest threat on his team is gone. And there's nothing this person can do. And yep, there goes the Luminami. I go into Charkiki again. 
There's kind of no reason. I could have just sacked my Himber, but there's no reason why not to just go Chartiki and get the 5-0. And Chartiki cleans up from here, and we will be able to win the second and final battle I'm going to showcase because this video is going to be 40 minutes long otherwise. So, and I just wanted this video to be quick so I could tell you all how to PvP in Lumion Legacy. And I think those two battles, there's a lot from those two battles that y'all can learn. But keep in mind, every battle is going to play different. Every player plays differently, every team plays differently, and your decision making should play differently depending on the situation. So these two battles are going to help a lot in terms of in-game decision making, but it won't be the exact decision that you should make every single time. So keep that in mind. Every battle plays different, and whatever point and whatever battle that you're in determines the decision that you make. So yeah, that is how to Lumion Legacy PvP in a nutshell. In the next episode of the PvP or series, we're going to teach y'all how to rally Lumians. Because if you can't rally your own PvP Lumians, it's going to be very hard to get into the PvP meta. So that'll be next episode, though. I hope you guys enjoyed this video of the PvP or series, and I will see y'all all later. Bye bye.